Hi guys, welcome back. Today I am going to be making a pair of these tiny clay gnome earrings. These are the first couple pairs that I made and I am super happy with the way that they turned out. They are so cute. I also have this pair. These ones are my favorite. I love the coffee beans and I'm really happy with the colors that I chose. Now prior to making these, I did scour the internet for video tutorials on how to go about doing this and most of what I found was either not appealing to me or they were made with molds and cutouts that I just don't have. So today I'm going to show you how I made these ones using just my hands and one improvised tool that you probably already have in your home. So let's get into it. For the gnome himself, you'll just need a small lump of clay. And for a tool, I am using a straight pin for sewing and I will be using the ball end of it and the pointed end. If you're turning these into earrings, you will also need a set of eye screws and also a set of earring hooks and a pair of pliers or tool to put them together with. You're going to start with two balls of clay that are about the same size. You want to get them as round as you can. I've got mine on an old phone. It's nice to have something that you can move around while you're working. And I would say the hardest thing about making these is getting them the same size. Obviously, because they're made by hand, there is a slight size variance on every single one. None of them are exactly the same. I did a pretty good job on these. Um, the size difference isn't too noticeable. I do have this pair on the end, though, that the size difference was just too significant to ignore. So they will not be a pair of earrings. But it's really important to make sure if you're doing earrings that they are the same size. And the best way to do that is to start with two pieces of clay that are the same size and also to make both of them together so that you can match them up to each other and make sure that they're nice and even. So you're going to take your first ball of clay and we're going to start by just making a point on each end. And you want them nice and even, so I usually roll them between two fingers like this until I start to get a little bit of a point on there. And once you've got your ends out, you can pick them up and kind of roll them around in your fingers so that you're getting a nice even, even points. Um, one point is going to be the hat, and then the other point is going to be the beard. So you want to make them pretty even but keep most of your girth right here in the center that's where his face is going to be and you're just going to want to roll them around again keeping them nice and even and don't worry too much about shaping them right now you just want to worry more about getting them the same size so go ahead and do both of them measure them up to each other so that you can make them as even as possible And then spread them out a little bit because we are going to start pressing them down. We want them nice and flat on the back. So if you start in the center and just kind of tap them a little bit. And then we're going to press down the tips, both of the tips, so that they are nice and flat on the back. And keep pressing them out and kind of wider in the center. You don't want to press them out too much on the tips. And you're also going to want to round out those edges. So always making sure that they're the same size and just kind of press them down. You don't want to press them down too much. You know, kind of peel them off once in a while because you are going to need to pick them up again and you don't want to ruin them trying to move them. Thank you. 
And once you've got a basic shape, you can kind of start, um, you know, forming the folds on the hats or the curl in the beard or whatever you're going to do. I like to curl mine, you know, if I point one inwards, then I'll point the other one in towards it or vice versa so that they're in opposite directions. So once you've got them all shaped and pressed out, this is what they'll look like. And we can start working on the noses. And to make the noses, you're just going to make two smaller balls of clay. Again, about the same size. One for each one, and you're going to roll them nice and round and then kind of elongate them just a tiny bit. And we're not putting them on right now, we're just placing them. And you wanna place them kind of more towards the middle so that you have room up top for the hat because we're gonna put a brim on it. If you place them too high, then with the brim, the hat's gonna look really short and we don't want that. So once you get your noses in place, you can take your straight pin and you're just gonna mark where the nose sets on it. So put your straight bend right behind the nose there and make just a little notch in the clay. And the same thing on the other side, just notch it out. And now we can take the noses off. And now we're gonna go ahead and mark out the line for the hat. So using your straight pen, just start from the notch that you made, and I like to point mine kind of downwards a little bit more. If you want, you can make them go straight across or round them a little bit less, but I like mine nice and down on the sides. And this one looks a little bit uneven. I'm gonna cut it in a little bit more on this side so that it matches up with the other side. The other line's gonna be covered by the brim of his hat, so it's no big deal. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other piece. And now that these are marked, you're gonna take the ball end of your straight pin and just push out the hole where his nose is gonna set. little nose holes you want them right in the center on the brim of the hat where you made your first notch so now we have a nice little hole for his nose to set in and before we put the nose on we are going to take care of his beard first so if you pick him up and then using your straight pen again, you're just gonna mark out the lines for the beard. And I like to start in the center. You don't want super straight lines, kind of curve them a little bit with the shape of the beard. One on the other side. And then one here. And same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna go through and do some upward facing ones just in between each one of these. And it's okay if your lines are a little bit rough. You know, and again, don't worry about making them too pretty. Um, we're gonna go through and clean them up a little bit when we're done. Once you've cut out your beard lines, you can put the noses on and you're just gonna set them in the little holes that you made. Set them in there and you wanna make sure that they're nice and even and then go ahead and press them down. Very gently, you wanna press them hard enough to adhere to the clay underneath, but not so hard that you're smashing them or causing them to lose their shape. There they are, and now we are going to be making the brim for the hat. 
So you're gonna take a small piece of clay and you're gonna roll that out like a snake. And this needs to be long enough to do both brims so that they're the same size. And so you're just gonna roll it out nice and smooth and even. And again, keep in mind that we are going to be pressing it just a little bit. So maybe a little thinner than you might think you want it. Now we can start flattening it out and I'm gonna roll it because it's faster, but you can certainly use your fingers for this. We're just applying very gentle pressure. You don't want to roll it out too thin. And once you've got it rolled out, you're gonna pinch it in half so that you have two pieces, one for each hat. <laughs> And to put them on the gnome, you're just gonna line the edges up to the hat line that you cut in. You're gonna line it up on one side and kind of press it down a little bit. And then, sorry about the focus here, guys. When you're going over the nose, you don't want it to set on the top of the nose. You kind of want it in between half of it on the nose and then half of it back on the hat and match up your other side and when you've got it you know kind of how you want it just I just clip the ends here off with my fingernail and then you're going to want to turn that over in your hand and very gently smooth out the seam on the back so that it's smooth and pretty. Once you've got the sides down, you're gonna to wanna to go back through and just kind of press the brim of his hat very gently. You just want it to adhere well so that you don't have to worry about it coming off or cracking or breaking. And you're gonna do both gnomes. And once those are done, you can go ahead and go back through with your straight pin and fix up those beard lines and then smooth everything out really well. If there's any, you know, nicks or imperfections, fingerprints. If you have a paintbrush, um, you can dip it in a little bit of water and it works really well for smoothing things out. And it's easy to get into, you know, hard to reach places where you might smash it with your finger otherwise. So get your straight pen and your paintbrush and go through and just make sure that everything looks nice and neat. And once you've done that and you've got it to your liking, we can set the eye hooks in the top of the hat and get him baked. When placing the eye hooks, I usually use the nose as a guideline. If you line the post on the screw up with the center of the nose, it's really easy to get them evenly placed on both sides. If you don't have eye screws, um, you can use jump rings as well. I've got this pair and I just made a hole with my straight pen and then ran the jump ring through the hole. You can also elongate the tops of the hats a little bit more. If you make them skinny, you can curl them over like this and then put the jump ring in the loop. I prefer the eye screws because not only are they less likely to break, but if they do happen to come out of there, you can always just use a dab of glue and fit it back in there and you haven't ruined the whole piece. So I tend to prefer the eye screws over the jump rings. These are now ready to go in the oven and you can check your specific clay for baking instructions. I usually bake mine at 275 for about 15 minutes. So now that they're baked, I will be painting them and I'm not gonna film the whole paint process, but I will show you the finished piece and share what brands and colors I use. Here they are baked and painted and I will give you a closer look at them here. I love the way they sparkle in the light. The colors look very winter, which is exactly what I was going for. I also painted the backsides of them and I will show you they are nice and smooth 
and I've got a nice clean line where I painted them. And when you're painting these, there's four parts of them to be considered for color. The beards, the noses, the hat brims, and the hats themselves. So for the hats themselves, I used this apple barrel in cool blue for my base coat. I used two coats of that. And then I went back in with a thin layer of this ice blue metallic by Folk Art. For the beard, I've got another apple barrel paint here. This one is granite gray that I used for my base. And then I went back over that with Folk Arts Metallic. This is pearl white. I've used these two colors together before and they look great for beards. For the nose, this is another apple barrel paint and the label is missing, but I'm pretty sure the color is called Flesh. And then for the hat brim itself, I used this Deco Art Dazzling Metallics in Peacock Pearl. And I think it matches really well with the other blues that I chose. Now as a final step before adding the earring hooks, you are gonna wanna seal these with a thin layer of Mod Podge just to protect the paint. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed making these. I will be back next week with a video tutorial for these crochet lacy wrist cuffs, and I am currently in the process of a video for these steampunk stitched hearts. So stay tuned for those. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Feel free to comment and consider subscribing for more content like this.